Good afternoon. Good afternoon from the great state of Texas. This is Hassan, your host for today. Our program today is called Go Vote for Dummies. So no matter where you are, elections are an important thing. And uh, we thought that it would be a great idea to get some brainy people around us and start discussing about the election process, start dis discussing about things that are around election process. So with that, I would like to welcome you all and tell you a bit, little bit about the program. The program is basically designed to educate and create awareness and bring information to the community and also to persuade them to take action, means to go vote. That is the most important thing of all. We are going to make this program as simple as possible for people like me and others who are in my clan to understand that this is how simple it is. This is how you do things and try to use your energy and your mind and try to select the candidate that you would like. And this is the process to do it. So we are going to dwell on that. I'm going to introduce to the panel very, very shortly. But before that, we also want to mention that we have made a special effort to engage everyone, all the ethnicities, all the parties in, in the community to represent the panel, which you will see very soon. With that, I would like to go to the introduction and bring up my first, and that would be Miss Cynthia. Miss Cynthia is, uh, I'm going to take this out a little bit. Yeah, uh, Miss Cynthia, Guinea. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you. Um, let me introduce her briefly, and then we can talk more about it. She is the chair. Uh, for Fort Bend County Democratic Party. She is yeah. serving her third term. She is, she, uh, she, Fort Bend had turned blue in 2018 under her leadership, and she hopes she leads Fort Bend into a darker shade of blue. And I say good luck to you. Thank you. Our second panelist is Mr. Barka Charania, Dr. Barka Charania. Dr. Barka Charania is a Houstonian almost everyone knows, and his introduction can be pretty long, actually. It can take over the program. So I'm going to abridge it and brief it and keep to the minimum by letting you know that he's a surgeon, he's a lawyer, he's an author, and a student of history. All his life, he has been a volunteer with the Islamic, uh, Islami, Ismaili Muslim uh, community which is a very dedicated community, a very organized community, and I'm sure his leadership has given a lot to that community. He has worked in various positions, in top positions, in various organizations, has volunteered his time. But <clears throat> as I said, I'm going to cut it short and let you know that presently he is with Ibn Sina, uh, the North American uh, and the North American University and the trustee of um, Gandhi Museum Houston and the director with ISEEK and SUIT in North America, his particular interest in growing inequality and justice in our society, which forms the violence against affected people. My last candidate right now, uh, if you can kindly bring yourself onto the screen, I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. Ms. Nabila Mansour. Ms. Nabila Mansour's introduction is that I have seen her working for a long, long time around our community. But besides that, she is doing a campaign which is called Million Muslim Votes Campaign in Texas. And she is a hardworking lady on that. So I'm glad she's on it and we'll be talking about that. She has a background in organizing and ensuring un uh, underrepresented communities to have a voice in the political system. She's a graduate from the University of Houston Law Center. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much for joining. I welcome all my participants and all my viewers to the show. My program is going to be very simple. And my first question is starting with uh, Ms. Cynthia Guinier. Ms. Cynthia, what do I lose by not voting? And what does my community lose by not being prompt and act taking action for voting? So well, in a nutshell, when you do not vote, that is a vote for the person very likely you don't want because you did not vote for the person you wanted. So it is as simple as that. However, beyond that, it's our civic duty. 
it is something that we really aren't born with. You have to register to be able to do that. And it is what drives a democracy. In this country, we love our democracy. Many move here because of democracy. And it cannot be that unless we, as citizens, regardless of your party affiliation, are voting. Absolutely, absolutely right. But I can talk about my community and the traits that we have, but we will go to that later. My next question is to Ms. Nabila Mansour. And I also want to say upfront for viewers and also my participants, this program is going to be as long as it needs to be. So if we are able to wrap up our things in 25 minutes, we will be done and we will say thank you to everyone. And if we take 45 minutes, we will continue to do that till the program is reached to a conclusion in a way which looks satisfying. I've also requested uh, viewers to kindly put their comments there. They can be questions. If we can entertain them, we will do that. They can Remarks and suggestions, if we can entertain, we will do that. We will also flash them on the screen so everybody can read it. With that, my question goes to Ms. Vila Mansur. What do you say to the people who say it's like choosing one of the lesser, out of the two, it's a lesser evil? And people say, no, I'm not going to vote because of this reason. What do you tell them? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of apathy out there. And, and a lot of it is rooted in this idea that unless the candidate that I um, would like to vote for is perfect, um, meets all of the, the ideals and characteristics that I need, then it's not worth my time to actually go out and vote. Um, but I always say like voting is not like a marriage, right? So voting is not a marriage between two people where you're trying to find that ideal partner that aligns their values with you um, that, that meets your expectations, the characteristics that you want. Voting is more like um, catching a bus to get somewhere. You have an idea of what you need in order to prosper for your family, for your friends, for your community. Um, and so you have to get to a point, uh, from point A to point B in order to get to that place. Um, in order to get there, you need to catch a bus because you have to get there somehow. Now that bus might look a little rickety. That bus might not be the one you want. It might not be air conditioned. But if you wanna get to B, you have to take that bus. And so when you have two candidates on the ballot, one of those candidates might be a rickety old bus, but take the bus so you can get that stuff accomplished. It's so important. This is not trying to find your perfect marriage partner. You can worry about that in your own personal life. Right now, we got to get things done. We got to make sure that we have a healthy democracy. And the only way we have that is every, if everyone participates. That is awesome. It it's really cannot be explained better than the words that you have used to do it. Uh, that in order to get to a destination, we need to make a move just by standing there and talking about it is not going to move an inch. That means our distance between us and the destination would be exactly the same as it was before. Um, and other people will be moving on. So uh, I appreciate the answer that you've just given. And we will come back and talk more about it as a group discussion so everybody can input on that. But my third question has to go to Dr. Charania. And Dr. Charania, this is my question. What one thing that you would like to see disappear from the campaigning method and campaigning approach every time there's an election, whether it's local, whether it's <clears throat> whether wherever it is, campaigning takes a start taking a different direction, which none of us appreciate as a citizen. What is what are the things, or what is one thing that you would like to see disappear? Um, I think for this, I I'm a practical person, very practical. I think if something is available to be learned from somewhere i would rather learn it from there and do not reinvent the wheel look at the whole world everyone everywhere there is a democracy and democracy needs election and that election there is a pattern i have lived in england for about 10 15 years and uh, well the election season is a short one maybe a month and a half two months at the most mm -hmm. it's not year and a half and everyone is sort of you know just doing nothing but 
talking about election and talking about the candidates, this another. Um, I think two things should disappear. One is the time that is spent unnecessarily on the on, on this, and secondly, very much so, the money. The money that is employed in, for example, president, both sides, Democrat and the Republican, <laughs> almost a billion dollar each. That's, I mean, how can any one person can go and you know, contest an election? All the, you know, all, all the posts, for example, starting from even the city council, that will be 2,000 going into the state senator and the uh, and the legislator. It will be a few hundred thousand, few thousand, perhaps more, you know, going up to 100,000 senators, federal senators and the, uh, the House representatives. Maybe, I think, good half a million, maybe a million or maybe more senators, several million, in fact. So it's really if people are giving money, they expect something back. And that is where the representative who is elected is stuck. He has to return something. And that returning is, that's what corruption, that's where the corruption starts. And that's what should be taken out. For example, Citizen United with the Supreme Court, uh, I think a few years ago, that's the past. That has created further problem. I think we need to get the money out of the election and the time wasted out of the election for sure. That's great. Um, uh, Ms. Cynthia Wingenyard, how do you uh, respond to that and money to being taken out from the total election process or minimized? Uh, is it going to work? <clears throat> I agree with uh, Dr. Sharanya 200%. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, because as he already said, then it becomes an exchange. Now, is that exchange is good for one person or is it good for the community that you represent? You better believe it's good for that one person and their interest. Um, I would like to see the negativity uh, and the nastiness, if you will, <clears throat> taken out of elections. Um, it's too much of that. I think the community at large is tired of it. They do not want to hear that. That is not what they're interested in because it is not a part of my platform or my opponent's platform. That's not what it is. It, it, it distracts you from what you should be sharing with the community. So that's one thing that irks me. And that negativity comes in uh, many different ways. Sometimes it's verbal, but other times it's, it's physical. Uh, some, you know, it, it could be material. It could be signs, things like that. So I would like to, to, to see that leave in addition uh, to that critical and pivotal point that uh, Dr. Sharanya uh, shared. Very good, thank you. Ms. Navila, your response to this. Yeah, I think um, everything um, that uh, Chairwoman uh, Cynthia said and Dr. Um, Barakachanya said is of course valid. Uh, the only thing that I think we're missing is the role that social media has now taken in our elections is very dangerous. And it's almost like a combination of that money and um, that nastiness that Cynthia, you were talking about. Yeah. And this is a threat to democracy. Uh, we know what happens when you have unchecked uh, social media messaging. You have the cleansing of Burmese uh, Muslims in Burma, where villages are being put on fire and those messages are spreading against these um, uh, the Rohingya Muslims uh, through WhatsApp and Facebook and, and, and some of these other social media apps. Um, we know that uh, the role that Russia played in the last election, I am not convinced that they are not going to play their role this year. And those that misinformation um, that is that sweeps through um, our country. You and I both know the power of the WhatsApp message, the WhatsApp group, even in our own communities. Um, things that are not fact-checked, statements that are complete lies, are spread so easily, 
and it and it starts um, infiltrating the way people start thinking about certain candidates. And I believe it's it's something that is so so it's almost evil in a way. And and we really really need to put a check on that. Definitely. My my question to that is. I know these are the supporters and well-wishers of candidates who are doing this, but I never see a candidate speaking against Dick or telling them not to do it. Only so, when they become a victim. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. become a victim, they speak Absolutely out right. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly right. I completely agree with that. So, I mean, I hold the candidate responsible for this too because uh, no matter who their supporters are, if you're going out of your way to do such nastiness, you become part of that too, and you become responsible for that. So I hope that all of you wish for this, and I agree, and I want to um, I want to say that your wishes come true, uh, no matter how long it takes, but we got to start somewhere. We need to do the right thing, and that's what it is. Uh, Ms. Nabila, while you were talking, somebody put up a comment over that was about the bus. The bus may not end up reaching anywhere. Uh, may you go round and round. Is it a possibility? Is this? So um, if you uh, choose the one that will get you closer to that destination, then at least you'll get somewhat closer. I, I do think there is a difference between two candidates. Um, you might not agree on all the policies that one particular candidate has, um, but they might be closer to where you're thinking as opposed to the other one. And getting somewhere uh, a little bit closer uh, allows you more time if you support that candidate to um, say, look, I voted for you, but I think you should and keep pushing and keep pushing and keep pushing and open that Overton uh, window so that that idea that you have becomes the norm. Because oftentimes, um, things that we believe are are are, are better for the, the social good um, take time to get into um, into the mainstream. And I'm thinking of the civil rights. I mean, MLK is celebrated today, but he was not celebrated in his time. Um, it takes time. Colin Kaepernick got put out of football and was accused of being unpatriotic. And now what we see is that everybody is kneeling. People are wearing Black Lives Matter shirts. Um, it takes time to move the needle. And um, it is important that we keep pushing and pushing and pushing because we will get there. Uh, we just can't stop. Thank you very much. That, uh, Nabila used such a wonderful <clears throat> analogy um, when she talked about the bus and when she talked about them marriage that's not what it is um and in finding or selecting or voting for a candidate but when we think about our personal relationships which one of us agrees with everything our spouse or significant other <laughs> yeah yeah i can't even finish before your heads are going because we stop and one person acquiesces or you come to a win-win situation or you say, no, honey, you go ahead. I'm OK with that. So why expect more from a political candidate who may be representing you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Yeah. So that brings me to the question. And that question goes to you, Ms. Cynthia Ginyer, That Would you like to share your checklist of how to select a candidate? What is your approach? How do you process this? Well, first of all, you can't do that on election day or <laughs> when you go to the ballot. Yeah. Uh, and this is why uh, most candidates and most parties are pushing out that information before it's time to vote so that when the constituents make their choice about them or the opponent, it is an informed choice. It is an informed choice. We live in a technology world. A little bit of print is still out there. Whatever is available to you, you must be a responsible citizen for your well being. And that means that you must 
partake of that information that's out there and even seek it out. It is our job as candidates and parties to make sure it's out there in abundance and in the right places so that those who may vote for us know about us, but we can't wait for everything to drop in our laps. We must know that, oh, it's a presidential election coming up. The president, presidential candidates are not the only ones on that ballot. Well, who is on that ballot? Let me look and see. And then you can make an informed decision about your candidates. Some people vote straight party, one side or the other side. And if they do that this time, they will have to make that selection because there is no straight ticket voting. If you want to vote all D, you have to go down and choose them all. If you want to vote all R, you have to go down and choose them all. So um, we have to take charge of our part, our input into this thing we call a democracy. We must. All right. Dr. Sharania, what is your recipe for selecting the right candidate? What do you go through? What is your checklist? Uh, I'm a simple person. And I've seen, uh, I think, a lot of world. I've lived in India, Pakistan, England, and here, about a quarter of each. And all four are democracies. Some are great and some are less, less than great. Uh, India is the biggest and England is mother of democracy. Here it's a best democracy, they call it, but I don't know. Pakistan is a struggling democracy. I see I see this way, that who do I want to represent me for how and how? I think the person should be ethical, believes in morals, he has got humility, he's honesty, he believes in truthfulness, he has got love, compassion, and a, and a burning desire to be a social worker. Burning desire to be a social worker. And that's how people start with. For example, Davida was uh, contesting the election because she wanted to serve people. In England, they used to call, in, back in the 60s when I was there, they used to call them public servants. Maybe a mm -hmm. little, little, little kind of, you know, not quite great term. Now they change into, not great one, but they call it civil servants. They are servants of the people. We pay them. How many people do you know as employers who do not know the name names of their, their their employees? I don't think anyone would have an employee whose name they do not know and whose duties they do not know and they do not know how much they are they paid. Yeah. I would say the listeners here or even within us, probably a good majority, good majority I would call it, people do not know the names of their quote unquote servants. They are paid by us and we don't know their names. We don't know how much they are paid. We don't know what they are doing. We do not keep a check on what they are doing for us. So this is where things have gone wrong. We, it's us. We have gone, we have failed. We have failed in keeping a check on our employees who are supposed to be working for us, representing us, doing the things that we need to do, need, need them to do. And that is where the problem is. So I gave you all the attributes that I need in a, in a candidate. And I would say there should be one more thing that should be added. And Cynthia probably in her capacity can probably add something somewhere sometime. And that is every six months or a year, at least a year for sure, but I would say six months, 10% of the constituency should get together, meet the representative, ask him what has he done. And if he has not done the right thing, well, another six months, another six months, and the two years time, he's gone. I mean, but what, what Nabila said earlier, it's a bus. It's, it's not a marriage. It's, it's not a contract. In two years' time, you've got a chance to, well, say goodbye to them. And that's how it should work. Sure. Do you have anything to add to this, Ms. Nabila Mansour? Yeah, so I, I don't have very romantic visions, as you can tell, of what uh, a candidate is. I actually don't care. I, I look at voting as very transactional. And you want to find the person that is going to best um, uh, pursue the values that are important to you. Um, and so, so that is, that is the way I look at voting. Um, I don't need them to be perfect, Like that's not important to me. 
Uh, in fact, I think, and this is something that I would ask our community and the folks that are watching, is get out of this mindset because it is very destructive. When we have candidates from our own community, we expect them to be put on a pedestal and for them to be perfect. And when one thing goes wrong, we demolish them and we bring them down. And what that does is that um, it stops good people from wanting to run because it's scary going out there. It's scary putting, putting yourself out there. When you run for office, you have to give your everything to it. You put your whole life on hold. Um, and, and so when people see other people being um, trashed or put down, it stops good people from running. People are not perfect, nor are your candidates. They're going to make mistakes. Um, but to put them on this idea as if they cannot make one mistake and that's it, you're out, is very, um, it, is, it is not a good strategy. And if you want your community to really go far, you're doing your community a disservice by doing that. Um, we cannot put the standard on our, our elected officials or our candidates. Um, it, it's a recipe for disaster. And, and I think that that is something that maybe as we mature, we'll get better about. That's great. Great input from all of you. I really appreciate that. It was important for me to get your views on that because it helps me as a voter to educate myself and I've surrounded myself with some great minds who are giving me and my viewers uh, some great input. Voter registration. I know Ms. Nabila Mansoor had been working at, on this for a long, long time. So my question, which essentially go to her first, but then it will also revolve uh, in other places. Uh, what do you see as problems? What do you see as challenges? Where is the hope here? You are into a one million Muslim vote campaign. That's huge. Yes. Um, so the pandemic, I mean, everything that we want to, Cynthia, you'll, I mean, I'm sure agree with this. All those things that we thought we were going to do, we can't do anymore. And in Texas, and this is another thing we have to really start thinking about the type of people we elect. We cannot do online voter registration. Most states can. This is a huge impediment for getting people to vote, to register to vote. Um, so I'm working with this campaign called B uh, Million Muslim Votes. If you go to bit.ly slash TX Muslims vote, um, it'll take you to a form. All you have to do is put your information in there and they will send you a paper ballot completed with all your information with an envelope that has a stamp on it. And then all you have to do is sign it because again, in Texas, we can't do online voter registration. You have to submit a paper ballot and then you put it in that prepaid envelope and it will send it to the home county from which you are anywhere in Texas. So bit.ly slash TX Muslims vote. It will send you an application to your home. October 5th is the last day to register to vote. The numbers have gone down since March. The reports of the voter registration rates have really gone down. We're phone banking every day. Every day we're phone banking. We are going to hit, by the end of uh, September, 30,000 people and 24,000 texts to non-registered Muslims in Texas. Um, to telling them about this service, encouraging them to vote, um, encouraging them to register to vote, and then we're going to call them once they're registered to vote and say, hey, you just got registered to vote. Now is an election. You got to vote. Um, so this is important, um, and we, we need to get elected officials in our Texas House of Representatives that will change the laws and allow more people to vote. The people that are not registered to vote are, guess what? People of color, minorities, immigrants. And those are the folks that need to vote the most because their numbers are the lowest. Mm -hmm. So it, it's in, incumbent upon us that we register as many people to vote and then keep following up with them to get them to go out to vote because the rate of people that register to vote and not vote is actually really uh, very low. Uh, they need voter education. They need that push. They need that nudge. Absolutely right. Thank you so much, Dr. Berka Charania. You want to add something to that, please? And I'm sure you would. Yes, it's very important that, as I said earlier, I would like that 
there is a person who is representing me and doing things the way I, 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 I need it to be done. And that can only happen if I go and vote, if I participate. Our past history has been that participation in the election has been around 50% plus minus. Sometimes it is less than 50%, in fact. So if, say, 60% votes, and of that, 51% of 60%, which is about 31 people, go and vote out of 100, the person will be elected. So out of 100, it's only 31 people have elected a person. Rest, 69, they don't know. Somehow, they, somehow not participated at all. Others have just voted for someone else. So basically, you are really not participating. You are giving someone, totally someone uh, the, of the kind who might just be doing things that you do not want or just opposite to something that you want. So it's very important. You get registered and get vote and you go and vote. Okay. So, you know, there are a few traits in our community. We talk a lot about this thing and that includes me. It might just begin with me that we talk a lot. But we really, on the day of vote, I'm trying to pull everybody in the family to go and vote, which is just across the street. But it takes a huge effort. It's like persuading them to do something huge. That is often seen in the community. How do we correct that problem in us? Well, I suppose one has to continuously making uh, an effort and making sure that we keep on talking to our people making sure that they understand the importance of this. And one of the most important thing, I think uh, my, my community is more or less, everyone is business. And they have got their own money. Supposing if they, someone takes away $10 from their pocket, would they like it? No. Here, we are paying taxes, and those taxes that is our money is being spent by our representative. We don't know where they're spending. We must know it. We must know what they are spending on, whether it's the right kind of priority or not. And if it is not the right kind of priority, as I said earlier, well, keep meeting the representative, at least know the name <laughs> and keep on meeting them every six months and find out if they are doing the right thing. If they're not doing the right thing, well, in two years time or four years time when the time comes, say goodbye to them, find someone else. As uh, Nabila said, this is uh, just a just, just bus that we are taking to reach a destination. We may not be, it may not come to our home Door, doorstep our home, but we will, you know, we may have to walk sometimes. Great. We may get, get the destination. Great. Check and balance. Check and balance is what you're suggesting. Okay. Get to know who is your representative, what is he doing, what is his policy, because it's your money that he's spending on your behalf. So at least you should know where it's going. A very keen and important point. I think all of us in the community will relate to the money portion. We yeah, don't. Exactly dollars to go from us. So you better think of that as a hundred dollar. And what you said earlier, let me just add to that. Uh, that Please. Uh, Ms. Cynthia had just, uh, said something about it. The election, money in the election process. Hmm. And and because I have I paid, you know, because the large number of money is being coming, is coming from the corporations, they expect something back for them. And the laws are made to favor them. This is where the problem has started and it's going bad. I think it's our democracy, unfortunately, and this is how I put it, is turning into oligarchy. It yeah. has already turned into partly oligarchy, as it is in Russia and you know where, where, where places. I think we should make sure that our democracy comes back. That is, democracy is for equality and justice. I understand. I think this is what we are losing on our justice system, as well as the equality that we should have. That we are really. Uh, it's, it's, it's being encroached upon by the oligarchy and the money. Great. great. Miss Cynthia, I hope you're still with us. And I'm still here. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, but I would okay. love to see you at the same time. Well, I want you to see me too. Um, a uh, call came in and so uh -huh. it threw my, my video off. But nevertheless, my message is here. I'm going to get my picture going as soon as I can. Sure. Uh, I don't have the perfect answer. Uh, I came to politics, Hassan, as President Obama was campaigning because I wanted him to be a winner. And Mama always taught us that if you're praying for something to happen, then her question was, and what do you plan to do to help make that prayer? So that's why I ever came to pol politics at all. But once I got in there, and that was 2000, 
2007, very late into 2008. Once I got in there, I saw what you're talking about. Our people were not where they needed to be. Our greater community was not where it needed to be. Our community was not informed, uh, specifically when it came to voter registration. This is why we have a permanent headquarters open 12 months a year, because <clears throat> once I waited and decided to step up to the plate and run for office, I'm like, we can't do this 45 days before an election. This has to be like breathing. Voter registration has to be something that we don't stop doing. We hold our breath and go down for, uh, uh, go under the water and then come up for some air. And that's just about it. We stop for a holiday and we go right back at it. Um, really, you know, our county currently has about 800,000 residents. And do you know only about half of that are registered? I mean, regardless of party, only half are registered. So our work apparently will never be done mm. because guess what? Very likely that's the highest <laughs> ratio that has probably ever been. You wow. know, it gets better. It doesn't get worse. It gets better. So, so just think 10, 15 years ago, it was less than 50%. So our work is never done. It's never going to stop. I don't know the magic that gets people going. Yes, we have figures who come along and situations who come along that really propel people to get registered and to get out there and vote. But still, that is not enough. All I know is this. That's what I'm committed to doing. I came because I knew that I had something to bring to the table. I am a change agent by nature and I could move this needle forward and get us more engaged, more active, um, being uh, active participants. And yes, winning elections. I knew I could help make that happen. But when it's all said and done, I don't care if we win everything. Our work still isn't done. It still is not done. So I'm just going to keep doing what I can do in my concentric circles of contact and then encourage everyone else, Nabila, to do the same thing in her concentric circle of contact. The same thing, Dr. Sharania, and everybody else that I meet along the way. You do your part. You do your part, just do your part. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's that's great. Um, Ms. Nabila, you had mentioned something about a website link if you could be cut for a voter registration. If you could be kind enough to leave in the comment now or later so that people can see and will be able to access. If you do it right now, I'll be able to flash it on the screen as well. Um, do you have a place where you can go to do that? Or are you in WinStream right now? So I, mean, I put it in the private chat uh, between us. I think, do you see it? Uh, I'll have to go there to see it. I don't have it up here. Oh, I'll text it to you, yeah. Okay, please do so we can have it on uh, this comment section and people will be able to benefit from that because I forget it too and very often. Um, I think our program is coming towards an end. Um, I do want to uh, really thank all of you for taking out time and trying to make it easy for me to vote by going through the process and the mental uh, roadmap. And at the same time, uh, it, would be, uh, it would be very beneficial for those who are in the same boat as I am. Any last words, any comments from, uh, uh, let me start with uh, Dr. Charania here and then move over to the ladies so kindly. I think we have got many issues that we need to settle uh, like uh, living wage, $7.25 an hour will earn about 15,000 a year, which is starving wage, it's not a living wage. Yes. 
we need to correct that we need to correct the inequality uh, and the and the racism that has been our legacy for the last 400 years we need to definitely change it it may take little time but we need to definitely start doing it the, particularly the injustice that is happening from the slavery times for the 400 years when people were made to work without being paid zero and operation and you know all sorts of uh, punishments that the slaves had to uh, you know face that unfortunately was the slavery was abolished in 1861 62 63 but it took 100 years for them to get the real good voting right and equality in in 1964s uh president johnson's uh, uh, voting right etc et so it's really we are taking a long time to correct the wrong things that we are doing in the society and we need to hasten it and make sure that we do it quickly and uh, and, and and do it as best as possible as quickly as possible miss nabila your words Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you know, we're gearing up for a very, what's going to be a very divisive election year. Um, what I would say is we do actually have to go out and vote. I think a lot of the policies we're talking about here are those that are agreed by the majority of the population, but they're not enacted because um, most of those people are not voting. Um, and if everyone did vote, then we would certainly see some of that, um, uh, some of these issues come more to a forefront. I want people to vote. Um and and climate change is so important. And um student le- student debt I have you know I have a daughter and just started college uh some of the issues she talks about are not the ones that are often times at the forefront and 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 I was like well honey you know the reason is because your cohort doesn't vote. And when 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 elected candidates know that they know that they don't have to answer to you. um and and so if you and you other young people like you started voting then all of those things that you are complaining about would have a better chance of um having at least some type of solutions presented um that could actually be be placed into into action so um i think a full um inclusive uh vote of everybody um is so important I believe this is I know we say this every time but this really is the most important election of our lifetime. Uh I think democracy is at stake and um and uh you know it it it's really important that we all go out there and just try to make sure we vote. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. I have also put up uh the link for the website uh where you can do the registration by mail and uh it is just um as good as the information sent to me so kindly take care of that and kindly um make yourself comfortable with that um uh, thank you for this uh, meeting i am glad you liked it and it was of use to you uh miss cynthia is there anything that i'm missing i know as mr burke uh, there's tons to be discussed here but uh, in the last few lines would you like to add something on points that i might have Mr. Oh well let me uh just a couple of words in the summary and uh Dr. Sharania Nabila and I are uh certainly aligned on uh every issue he spoke on um I disagree with nothing uh that either of them had to say so I guess hey we need to get together and chat the three of us sometimes <laughs> Sure. sure. Lunch, so break bread together. Uh but listen uh to all of those all of you who are out there go vote vote your voice. I'm not going to say what that is or who that is, but you need to exercise the right. In our culture we always say those you know people died for you to have the right to vote and were beaten. But nevertheless uh um, wow. Hassan, our website is fbdemocrats.com, fb mm-hmm. in Fort Bend, democrats.com. Mm-hmm. So if you happen to want to know uh, about who we are and what we do and you want to be in touch with us, that is who I am. So that is what I'm sharing, not uh, trying to sway you one way or the other. That's where you can find us, www.fbdemocrats.com. 
fbdemocrats.com. That's FB as in Fort Bend. Uh, please, and let me say, I don't care how you go vote. Please early vote. Please don't wait until election day. Please early vote. If you are voting by mail, if you have your application, you probably have that already, or whenever you get it, send it off right now. Do not wait. Listen, we cannot control what someone does in Washington, but we can control what we do here. So don't hold on to your application, send it off. Don't hold on to your ballot, send it off. And do not wait until the last minute to vote. Go and vote as soon as you can because all of those measures minimize the room for error. Correct. Uh -huh. Correct. Thank you very much, everyone. I'd like to add to what Ms. Cynthia said, if you allow me. This is Please. a game in which you cannot be just a spectator. Mm -hmm. You must participate. This is a participatory game, not a spectator's game. Please register yourself and go and vote. Yeah. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. I think the last few words coming from our uh, panelists are the most important one, and that is to take action. Enough talking is done, and uh, it is. We, there's no better way to understand this. This The things have been said in plain English, and you definitely get it. Now, all we need to do is get out of our mindset of lethargy or whatever that may be and take action. Early voting saves you time. Early voting reduces the error. So with all those benefits in mind, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, all of you who've been there and who will be watching. Hopefully, this is of some benefit to you. And I would like to thank my distinguished uh, panelists over here, and, uh, <coughs> Ms. Nabila Mansoor, Dr. Charania, and thank also you. Ms. Cynthia Ginyard. I am really thankful for all of you to take out this Saturday afternoon and dedicate it to my small little program. But uh, hopefully that this goes a long way and people benefit from this with that. <laughs> Excuse me. With that, I'd like to say thank you very much and bye for now. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much.